One of the most crucial things to get right when developing a video game is your game's camera. It is one of the main ways that your player interacts with the world, and so it is unfortunately one of the earliest things that can create friction between them and your game. Like most things in design, we never notice a good camera, but the bad ones can often be rage-inducing nightmares to deal with, so it's important to get your camera right, or at least be equipped with the right tools to help you get the most out of it during development. Out of the gate, Unity's camera is a pretty bare-bones tool. There are virtually no built-in components for camera controls, and so you're often left to your own devices when it comes to making a camera feel good, right? Well, not quite. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we are going to explore why you should be using the Cinemachine package, and how we can use it to add more functionality to our cameras. If you're not already aware of it, Cinemachine is an add-on for Unity that imports a bunch of additional tools and features into your projects to allow for more control over how your camera operates. In many cases, it can save you a lot of time if you're just looking to add some simple camera movement, and a lot of effort if you're looking to do something more complex. By default, Cinemachine supports things like tracking an object around the screen, following a target in the world, and even includes fine-tuned controls to adjust framing and panning dynamically. Cinemachine was originally available as an asset on the Asset Store, but they were acquired by Unity in 2016, and so now it's free to use and readily available to anyone via the Package Manager. Frankly, Cinemachine is so useful that it is beyond me as to why it's not included by default when downloading Unity. Either way, it's one of the first things I install with every new project, so let's go ahead and do that. At the crux of the toolset is the Virtual Camera, a rather aptly named object that extends your main camera and enables all of Cinemachine's features. Let's create one and see how it works. When we first add a virtual camera, the Cinemachine brain component gets added to our main camera, and we can see this little Cinemachine logo on our camera in the hierarchy. We might have multiple Unity cameras in our scene, so this can be useful if you need to know or change the camera that Cinemachine is going to be using. If we select our virtual camera, we can see a huge list of settings in our inspector here, and this is your window into Cinemachine's power. The two main things you probably want to care about though are this follow transform property and the look at transform property, as these two properties determine the way in which Cinemachine will behave. So let's suppose that I wanted to get Unity's default camera to look at my character here as I move them or the camera around. I'd probably have to write some kind of system to track both positions and update the camera accordingly. It would probably feel pretty rigid and I'd have to spend a bunch of time trying to ease the camera properly to make the motion feel good. Well, with Cinemachine's virtual camera, all we have to do is drop our character's head here into our look at property, and voila, our camera and character are now in sync. As either of them are moved, the camera updates to keep our character in frame. And we can also play with our aim settings or these virtual guides here to control the framing of our character within the camera shot. To me, this is the number one star feature of Cinemachine. If you're doing cutscenes or anything that needs to abide by more film-like camera rules, being able to frame characters along the 180 line and within the thirds of your frame is a crucial feature which Cinemachine handles effortlessly. Outside of that though, there are some really nice features here of the aim component. If we hit play and move our character around, you can see that we can use these framing guides to control how our camera moves to keep up with our character. These blue soft guides here act as a dampening to catch up with our target, and these red ones are absolute dead zones that force Cinemachine to catch up. We can play around with these to get some really compelling camera behaviours. So that's good for a mostly static or passive camera system, but what if we wanted our camera to be more dynamic? Let's get our camera following our character as they move around. All we need to do is drop the root of our character into the follow target here. It's worth playing around with the different binding modes to get the best result, but essentially we can separate or combine our aim and follow transforms to get more complex behaviours and achieve our desired camera for the game we're making. Within these two settings alone, we can create a dynamic first-person camera, a responsive third-person camera, a top-down follow camera, and more. I'm sure you can already see the plethora of options available to you here with the virtual camera alone. However, there are some other compelling features included with Cinemachine that are worth mentioning. Let's suppose you're working on an adventure game or some kind of camera system that needs to act in a more passive manner. Cinemachine's clear shot tools allow you to dynamically cut between different cameras depending on the player's vicinity to them. So for instance, I can place a number of virtual cameras in the apartment here and hook them up using clear shot. 
As my character walks around and explores the place, the clear shot system analyzes what's visible and will cut. It takes a little balancing getting these settings just right, and you sometimes need to place a collider to give cameras a better idea of what's visible, but when it works, it's really impressive. We can even combine this with a track in the scene to have the camera move along with the character in wider spaces. I've actually talked in a bit more detail about the dolly cart and track tools in one of the first videos here on the channel, where I use it to set up a dynamic camera system for a turn-based battle game, so feel free to give that a watch if you want to learn more. In my opinion, Cinemachine is one of the most useful and frankly powerful tools that Unity has available to you, and it's doing itself a disservice being hidden away inside of the package manager. It gives you a ridiculous amount of flexibility towards controlling how your camera operates, and requires a lot less work than writing something bespoke from scratch. It's also incredibly extendable, so I'd suggest using it as the foundation for any of your camera behaviors in your games. I've kind of scratched the surface of the things you can do with Cinemachine in this video, but hopefully if you've never heard of it before, then this has given you a good overview of some of its features and you can now dive a little deeper into improving your game's camera. If you want to learn more about Cinemachine, I actually made a number of tutorials back when I was working at Unity. They're a little out of date now, but there's still some good information in there, so I'll link them down below for anyone that's interested. Unity have published a small number of tutorials about Cinemachine since then, so I'll also share what I can find down below as well. Before we wrap up this video, allow me to take a minute to thank this video sponsor, Skillshare. As you probably know by now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. If you're watching this, you're probably pretty curious about cameras, so if you want to learn more about how they work in the real world, or how to get better shots and apply the concepts back to your game, there are plenty of classes on photography and cinematography available to you. Because Skillshare is a platform specifically curated for learning, there are no ads and they are always adding new premium classes, so you can stay focused and go wherever your creativity takes you. If you're interested in Skillshare and you want to help support this channel, the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description below will get access to a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, allowing you to explore your creativity and check out some of these classes for yourself. So that's all for today. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on Cinemachine down below. Are you using it in your project already, or is this the first time you're hearing about it? Either way, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing as you'll be able to know when new videos go live. If you're interested in more videos from me first, why not check out the one on screen now? As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.